Hey everyone, welcome to part 63 of my Pokemon game series in Unity. So in this video, we'll make some improvements to our dialogue system and interaction system so that in the future, we can easily implement features like NPC giving an item or activating a quest after a dialogue like this. Special thanks to all my Patreons for making this series possible. By becoming a Patreon, you can support me and get access to the complete project files of the series. The project files also contain some advanced features that are not covered on YouTube. So let's start the video. So first, I'll fix some bugs that I made in the previous video. So let me show you the bug. So if I try to use a potion on a Pokemon with full HP, you can see that we are not showing the dialogue saying that this item won't have any effect okay so this is because in the previous video inside the use item function we added this if condition this was because we only want to show this dialogue for recovery items all right so the problem is inside this else condition the used item will always be null okay since if condition is checking if the used item is not equal to null then inside the else the used item will always be null so we can't check like this instead we can get the item using its index and then check if the item is a recovery item okay that's one way but a more simpler way would be to check the current category so if the current category is recovery items then we can confirm that the item will also be a recovery item okay so here i'll check if the selected category is equal to item category dot items okay and we also have to convert the enum into an int because selected category is an int so yeah this should solve the bug for us so let's go to unity and test okay so let me try to use a potion so yeah now we are getting this dialogue correctly okay another issue is when we start the battle we directly go to the party screen so this is because we forgot to disable the party screen in the battle system okay so here you can see that the party screen is enabled so let's go ahead and disable it and now we shouldn't have that problem so next let's go ahead and refactor our dialog system so let me open up my dialog manager script all right so in here we have a function called show dialog that is used to show a dialog and a dialog can have multiple lines right so from this function we are only showing the first line and the rest of the lines are shown from the handle update so that's how the dialog system is implemented right now so what I want to do is I want to refactor this so that all the logic related to showing a dialog should be inside this coroutine the reason for this is because if all the code is inside this coroutine then we can easily wait for this dialogue to complete by waiting for this coroutine okay so right now it's a bit more complex if we want to do anything after the dialogue is complete then we have to pass an action like this that is executed once the dialogue is complete okay so I want to do everything inside this function and clean this up. So instead of just showing the first line, we should show all the lines in the dialog, right? So I loop through all the lines by using a for each loop. All right. And then I'll call type dialog for each line. So here, we can just show the line variable so let me remove this and pass the line variable 
so instead of using start coroutine i'll use yield return here because i want to wait for this coroutine to complete before executing the next line okay and then i also want to wait for the user to press the z key before showing the next line right so for that i'll use the wait until coroutine and we want to wait until the user presses the z key right so now we'll wait until the user presses the z key before showing the next line okay so we can remove this line we don't need that anymore so now all the lines will be shown from here itself and once we finish showing all the lines we can disable the dialog box so i'll say dialog box dot set active false and then i'll set is showing to false and then i'll also invoke the on close dialog event okay so now all the code to show a dialog is inside this code team so let's go ahead and remove all the code from the handle update okay and we can also go ahead and remove the variables that are not required since everything is done from here we don't have to cache these things okay so let me remove all the unwanted variables and that will cause few errors over here so let me just remove this line and just clean this up okay and we also have an error over here so we don't need this is typing variable anymore since we are calling type dialog using yield return it will always wait for this to complete before running the next line so we can remove the is typing variable all right so i think this approach is much more better so now we don't have to use this action as a callback since all the code is in this coroutine we can simply wait for this coroutine to complete right and then run the next step so we don't have to put the next step in a callback like we did right now so let me just remove this action so when we remove it we'll have error in the places where we are calling it so let's fix them one by one I'll go to the NPC controller and in here instead of using start coroutine I'll use shield return to wait for this dialog to complete okay and after the dialog is complete I'll run these two lines all right so I think this is much more cleaner than passing a call back but now we have an error over here this is because in order to use heal return this function must be a coroutine so this function is defined inside the interactable interface so we'll change this function to a coroutine in a moment but first let's go ahead and change the other places in which show dialog is called so i know that it's called from trainer controller so let me open trainer controller script and yeah it's called over here so i'll use heal return here all right and once the dialog is complete i'll run this line okay so let's also use heal return over here we don't have to because we don't have any line to execute after that 
but let's just change it in case we need it in the future. Okay. So we have another place from where we are calling show dialog. So let me also do the same over here. Okay. And let me also move this line below this. So next, let's fix the issue with the interact function. All you have to do is just change it to a coroutine, right? But since this function is defined inside the interactable interface, to make a change to it, we'll have to change it here and we'll also have to change it in all the areas from which it's implemented, right? So this function is implemented in NPC controller and trainer controller and it's called from the player controller. So we'll have to change it in all these places. So first, let me make this a coroutine. Okay. So next, we'll have to change it in all the places where the function is implemented. So over here, you can see we have an error. This is because here we are not implementing the function properly. Okay. So if I change this to a coroutine, then we won't have that error anymore. All right. So let me also change this in the NPC controller. And also when we call this function from player controller, we have to put it inside start coroutine, right? Or we can also use heal return if we want. So I'll actually use heal return because it will be useful in case we want to execute some other line after calling this coroutine. Okay. So if we use heal return over here, we'll have to make this function a coroutine. All right. And then while calling this function, we'll have to use start coroutine. All right. So we are done with refactoring the dialogue and interaction system. So I think this approach is much more cleaner than the previous approach. And this will make things easier for us when we implement story and quest system in the future. Okay. So let's go to Unity and test if this is working. So first I'll try talking to an NPC. Okay. So dialogue is working. So next I'll try starting a trainer battle. All right. So even here, the dialogue is working. And finally, let me also try starting a trainer battle by talking to the trainer directly. Okay. So all the changes are working fine. So I'll stop the video here. If you think these videos are helpful, please leave a like and consider subscribing to my channel. That'll really help me out. So I'll see you in the next video.